Hello guys, today we're going to talk about triangulation. Triangulation is a chess technique that aims to lose a tempo and gives the move to your opponent within the exact same position. Aim is to give your opponent Zhu Zhuang. Okay, let's do a deep dive into this position uh, where we can demonstrate triangulation. White plan here is to play C6, but white has to do it at the right time. Like for example, if, if it's C6 now, that's a mistake. Uh, it's draw already. Black shouldn't take because if black takes, well, then white is winning again because uh, king c5, then uh, black is in Zugzwang and will lose this pawn. Instead, black should move back to guard this pawn at b7. And now if uh, c takes b7, then king takes b7, and the black king control these key squares, and white wouldn't be able to access them, and it's a draw. The right move for white here is to triangulate first. So e5, and now black cannot follow the white king and continue to give it off position because if uh, king e7, then c5, c6 break is now deadly. There is no other way to defend. Um, these two squares are controlled by the pawn and the pawn promotes easily. So in this position, black's best try is king c6. But now white go king d4, defending this pawn. Black has to go back, d king d7. And now white goes king d5. And if you notice, this is the exact original position, but now it's black to move instead of white to move. And that's why it's called triangulation, because the white king makes um, triangular move from d5, e5, d4, and then back to d5. Now black is in Zugzwang. Of you cannot move away from the b7 pawn, because it uh, has to watch for the c5, uh, c c6 break. So black's best try here is actually king c8, uh, guarding this pawn. But now we use our king to corner black's king, king d6. Let's say black try to resist and give opposition, king d8. We use the same idea as earlier. First, we move away from the pawn, king e6. Black cannot follow because it has to watch for c5, c6 break. So king c8. And now we go king e7. Corner black in, king b8, king d7, and king a8. Now here white is ready for the c5, c6 break. After the black king is in the corner, c5, c6, b takes c6. And now we can just go to c7. This will be stalemate usually, but then uh, black has a pawn, so it has to move. b7 check, king a7, promote and it's checkmate and white wins let's look at another position to really drill this concept of triangulation here we have kasparov playing black against left albert playing white by the way just to avoid confusion black plays this way and white plays that way it's black to move and black has two plans here black can either try to infiltrate white position through the e file basically with the king goes to e2 so that the king can guard f file to promote or black can try to go to g3 and try to gobble up white's pawn on h3. Both of these plans don't work straight away for black. So if black moves to e3 straight away, trying to move to e2, then the white king will just go to e1, give the black king opposition. f2 clearly doesn't work here um, because the white king goes to f1 and then it's either stalemate or the black king has to move away and give up this pawn. Going back to the original position, the other plan is to go to g3, but uh, again, if black do it in a straightforward way by king f4, trying to go to g3, then white easily defend with king f2, giving a uh, black king opposition and guarding this square so that the black king cannot go into it. So black needs to be a bit more subtle here. There are two plans, but uh, doing those uh, two plans straight away don't seem to work. Black needs to triangulate. How should black triangulate? Well, by moving the king to f5. And the idea here is that white cannot move to f2 because then black would answer with f4. And now white has to give black king uh, way to f3. So f2 is out. And white's uh, moves now is just e1 or g1, but 
it doesn't really matter where white moves. Uh, let's say it moves to g1, then black will move to e5 now. Same thing if white moves to e1 earlier, uh, black would still move to e5. And now white has to uh, go back to f1. Um, h1 doesn't make sense, obviously, getting away from this pawn, um, which uh, black then can uh, infiltrate through e file and promote. And now black can go back to e4, and the triangulation is complete. Uh, we're going back to the original position, but instead of blacks to move, now it's whites to move. And white is in Zugzwang here. So white king has three moves, really. E1, F2, and G1. And each of them are losing. So if E1, then black moves to E3, giving white king's opposition. Uh, white has to move back to F1, and this is... Uh, this is winning easily. Black will promote. Uh, the other two candidate moves are F2 and G1. Now if F2, then as has been shown previously, Black simply moved to F4. And now Black will infiltrate uh, G3 and gobble up this pawn. And if the last move uh, G1, then Black can do the e-file plan, infiltrating the king through this. Uh, white is too late to give opposition. So that this pawn will promote. Just to summarize, in this position, black is winning. Uh, black has two plans going to e-file or to g3 to get this pawn. But black cannot do it straight away. Instead, black has to do uh, triangulation and give white the move. Uh, because white is in Zugzwang if it's white's turn to move. Uh, so yeah, that's triangulation. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so in the game next time, um, if uh, you're in a position where you think uh, your opponent would be in Zugzwang if it's uh, his turn to move, but it's your turn to move, then ask yourself, can you perform triangulation to lose a tempo? Okay, guys, that's all from me in this video. Um, if that's helpful to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.